is he, is is under the supervision of uh, Pamsek, a civil servant. Now, what kind of dismemberment can you think of when in a government you you have a situation where ministers are there as figureheads? They, and he said that budget did not is, is not part of the budget I presented. So who presented the, the, the budget? The, is it a, a pointer to institutions that are non-existent or weak institutions? Because, I mean, are there are certain things that certain institutions should, as Chamberlain asked, get up and begin to do something, do something about it. Is it a question of non-existent institutions or weak institutions? There are weak institutions. We, we have enough institutions in Nigeria. We don't need to set up committees. Here and there, every time we don't even need new laws. We don't look. I've always said it. We have more than enough laws, apart from tinkering with the laws we have, amending them, amending the constitution. You see, some people have stood before the press to say, "Look, as it stands, it is all. It's almost impossible to amend our constitution." What kind of people are we? The world is moving on, and we say, "No, we are going to be bogged down." That's why people can come up today and say they are agitating for cessation, for this self-determination and all that. I, I had a discussion in church, and it, it had to do with dual citizenship, right? And in the course of researching, I, I, I went into the Constitution under, under I think, Chapter 4, talking about citizenship. I, I'm sorry, I have to tell you, he's talking yeah. about institutions, how weak the institutions are. Now, you have a situation where they said, there is nowhere in our constitution that we can have referendum. <laughs> there is nowhere. There is no provision for such. So we, are not, we can't have, except the, uh, the Congress, they do something about the constitution, which can never be done as it stands. <laughs> so I now looked on that citizen and said, oh, you can actually renounce your citizenship. You can actually say, I don't want to be a Nigerian again. So that's, I said, yeah, that's through the back in back. our constitution. So now, why can't all the IPOB members say, okay, if indeed it's as popular as they tell us, they can conveniently say, okay, renunciation of citizenship is under our constitution. I'm renouncing. But the question is... In which is, country? In well, Nigeria. In this country is in the you can, you can renounce. <laughs> it's in our constitution. If they renounce, where would they be living? Uh, no, now, that's the, that's the next question. So, assuming that all the people in the eastern part of Nigeria say, we hereby renounce our, our, our citizenship, well, they have to fill a form. <laughs> and that form... The approval must come from Mr. President. <laughs> Do you understand? But the Mr. President would then say, okay, he can conveniently say, okay, if you renounce your citizenship, but your renunciation of citizenship does not mean that part you occupy, the land, belongs to you. The question then becomes, is it the state that owns that part, or is it the Federation of Nigeria, if we are a federating unit? Now, do, there, are, there are what we call lacuna in law, in Nigerian law, a lot of gaps spaces yearning to be filled. Unfortunately, instead of our National Assembly to sit down, make laws, amend laws that are in conformity with modernity, all they are interested in is about budget, about constituency projects, and that is the problem we have. Institutions are weak because the body that is supposed to empower institutions is not working, and that's the, Cong that's the National Assembly. They are, not, they are not tinkering with the laws. They are just sitting down. You have a situation where the wife of the former president writes a petition to a whole Senate that my account has been frozen. And they set up, a, they, they invite the banks and everybody to come and talk about that. And there are matters pending in court. Can you imagine that? The court is an institution. And now, the, the National Assembly is taking steps that is tantamount to derogating from the powers of that institution. That is tantamount to corrupting that institution. Yeah. That is the lawmaking organ of the Federation. You know, I, I'm just looking at through this, uh, I think seven days ago, it was published that the permanent secretary of the State House, Mr. Jalal Arabi, said that uh, the management of State House Medical Center would, among other things, seek the commercialization of uh, to ensure that uh, they address the dwindling fortunes. So is he the same person that should be answering questions in terms of what has gone wrong, where the money has gone, and such things, if any agency were to look into it? Well, if you answer questions about the 3.2 billion, if the, if the first lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria says they don't have syringe, Panadol, first of all, before you even talk of commercialization, 
what happened to the monies that were budgeted for this place. Now, when the, mini the Minister of Health cannot talk about his health. Now, you want to commercialize a clinic that does not cater to up to 100,000 persons in a year. Now, the uh, teaching hospitals, Luz and everywhere, you are not talking about, about commercialization. These are people who attend to millions of people every year. And you say you want to, can I go there to be treated? Can you go there to be treated? And you are talking of commercialization, in what sense? Well, it's a, a scenario that certainly we'll be keeping our focus on to find out what exactly is going on. And I uh, can't preempt anything from that committee of the Senate going to sit, but we have to anchor at this point. I appreciate your coming on, mm -hmm. Mr. John Oloide.